Welcome back. The Minister of Defense and Military Veterans, Tandi Modise, has declined to give details about the mysterious docking of a United States-sanctioned Russian vessel on South African shores three weeks ago. However, Modise accuses the U.S. of threatening peace across the African continent. Residents of Simonstown in the Western Cape shared photos of six containers being loaded from trucks onto the vessel. Let's take a listen to what the minister said during the briefing yesterday. Until I get all the paperwork, I will be guessing, and I will be giving you hearsay, and tomorrow you will say I'm a liar, and I am very clear. I don't want to be called a liar. So I'm waiting for the paperwork, I'm waiting for the people who know. We do know, however, that whatever contents this vessel was getting were ordered long before COVID started, and therefore... The reason you are interested and America is interested in that vessel coming into our shores is actually because America threatens the rest of Africa, not just South Africa, of having anything that is even smelling of Russia. All right, let's have a conversation about this now with a defense expert and director uh, of the African Defense Review, Darren Olifir, to get some perspective on, on, on this. Darren, thank you so much for making time for us. Uh, before we get to, to the issue about, um, um, about what the minister was talking about there, I want to get your thoughts on the decision to send the army to some of ESCOM's uh, power plants. The minister believes that the safeguarding of ESCOM's infrastructure should be the responsibility of the SAPS. But has the SAPS played that role, I suppose, is the question we've got to ask. Do you think the military is trained for this type of work and, and agree with the minister that this is not something they should ordinarily be deployed to do? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in this context, the minister is completely correct. And I have to wonder why she didn't push back harder in that case. The military does not have training specifically to handle questions of sabotage of large-scale power generation capacity. You know, uh, in terms of this current deployment, what they're being essentially is glorified security guards. They're providing security around the perimeter, providing security at points of entry and exit, and they're doing searches of vehicles and personnel. That's something that can be done by police, police you know, um, officers. It can be done by private security. Yeah. There's no inherent reason for this to be done by, by the SANDF. Uh, this is effectively something being done for optics as opposed to being done because it's effective. Yeah. We are talking here about a military that is so underfunded. How much strain do you think this deployment will cause? So this particular deployment shouldn't cause too much strain. The numbers are fairly small. You know, the SANDF itself is already quite small in, in its size historically. Um, doesn't have many troops to go around. Provided this remains fairly small in terms of a few you know, a dozen or so troops per, per station, it is sustainable. Um, of course, the question is, what conditions are those troops enduring at the stations? Do they have proper accommodation, proper support? Um, are they moved, you know, do they have an, an opportunity to, to, to rotate in and out? Uh, these are questions that haven't been answered yet, so we don't know those. Um, but the, the numbers so far are quite small. The, the concern, of course, is that if this becomes a permanent thing or grows in scope, it will definitely put a, a severe strain on the SANDF and one that it can't handle given its current commitments and funding. Yeah. L let's touch now on what the minister said yesterday about this Russian vessel which docked um, at, at that harbour in Simon, Simon's town. What do we know about Lady R? And what did you make of the minister's response as well? So I think the minister's response was um, not ideal given the context. Uh, you know, the, the Lady R, we know it's, it's a sanctioned vessel. No, yes, it's sanctioned by the U.S. So that's more of, the, of an issue to handle between both countries in terms of, of diplomacy. The main question for us is that, as Africans, what do we expect from our government in terms of transparency and openness and timely information? So this is a ship that docked, you know, under effectively false pretenses. We were told that it had suffered an emergency and therefore was required to dock in Simonstown for, for aid. Uh, and then completely secretly, um, it, it offloaded and potentially loaded on cargo. Now, there's no reason for this level of secrecy. If we're doing arms purchases in terms of ammunition, it's meant to be open. You know, we have tenders, we have uh, reports that we give to the 
um, the UN on the Arms Trade Treaty. We have reports given to Parliament by the, the National Convention Arms, Arms Control Committee. So there should be nothing secret about any of our deliveries of, of, of ammunition. You know, it's all reported. Why then this layer of secrecy around this, this ship and the way it was done? Mm. Um, why has it taken two weeks to have any comment whatsoever, you know, which is completely unsensible? Um, so I think that the question for us is not so much you know, the nature of the ship itself and whether or not sanctioned and whether or not South Africa has to abide by your sanctions, because those are, I think, you know, open questions. The issue is government should not mislead us as the public yeah. regarding you know, any of the stuff. And as it stands now, and, and based on what's on paper, if, if there is, in fact, paper trail, do we know what cargo is loaded onto Lady R? My information, although it's uh, unclear at this stage, is that it was cargo intended for the Special Forces, and it's mostly ammunition. Um, it's possible, although not confirmed, that it's part of an order from 2020 that was for about... Uh, 10 million rand and, and, and a few million rounds of ammunition, in which case probably not very high end ammunition. We're talking probably small arms caliber stuff. But again, this is something that you know, government should be able to tell us and shouldn't be a secret. Mm, yeah. The, the U.S. has been putting pressure, uh, saying that, you know, don't allow it to dog. What do you think are the consequences mm -hmm. of South Africa going against the U.S.? And not to suggest that South Africa must pander to the U.S. and be bullied if, if that's how you uh, some, some read it, but how is the U.S. likely to respond? That's a good question. Um, in this case, probably diplomatically. You know, I don't expect there to be severe repercussions at any kind of um, a visible level, but there will definitely be protests, um, both public and private. Uh, one area which might have an impact is the SANDF is currently negotiating with the U.S. for the uh, transfer at no cost, or at least the, the sale at very low cost, of a number of ex-U.S. military C-130 aircraft. Uh, that might be, be, be jeopardized by this, uh, although it's unclear at this stage. And, uh, you know, we might see some level of cooperation in, in that sense decline a bit over the next few months in, in, in response. Again, the question needs to be asked, is this worth it? You know, yes, we can buy from whoever we want to buy from, and uh, there's no requirement for South Africa to buy by the sanctions. But diplomacy is an interesting game. You know, you have to win some, lose some as a small country mm. and we apply the same standards to our neighbours too in terms of um, what we want them to do and don't want them to do mm. so it's a it certainly I don't think will be without consequence but it's difficult to say how serious it will be and it's not something that is not allowed this is more a case of um, what what kind of pressure might be, might be applied further on Yeah, Darren Olifir, thank you for making time for us this afternoon